Hello students, welcome to the session. Today I am going to present you regarding the topic of arm which is also called as brachium. So it is coming under volume 1. Okay, so arm or brachium. So as such the arm is divided into two compartments, anterior compartment and posterior compartment. So anterior compartment is also called as flexor compartment and the posterior compartment is called as extensor compartment. So these two compartments are separated by the intermuscular septas that is medial and lateral intermuscular septas. So today I am going to particularly discuss about the anterior or flexor compartment of the arm. When it comes to any compartment there will be the particular muscles in that compartment, vessels and nerve of the compartment. The muscles of the anterior compartment or flexor compartment of the arm, first I am going to discuss on that and then artery along with the accompanying veins and the nerve of the compartment. Going to the muscles of the compartment, there are three important muscles in the anterior compartment that is coracobrachialis, Biceps, biceps brachii and brachialis, the three muscles in the anterior compartment. So we will see with origin insertion, nerve supply actions of these muscles in this compartment. So first moving on to the muscle of coracobrachialis. As the name itself indicates coraco and brachialis. So it is taking its origin from the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula. Okay. And after that, the muscle fibers are passing downwards and it is inserted to the medial border of the shaft of the humerus. So along its origins, it also uh, it's homologous with the short head of biceps brachii, which is also taking its origin at the tip of the coracoid process. So that is the insertion you can see in the slide and the nerve supply is the nerve of the compartment that is musculocutaneous nerve and coracobrachialis acts like a weak flexor of the shoulder joint and it also acts like the adductor of the shoulder joint. It is the smallest muscle in the anterior compartment of the arm. So you can see in this picture here that it is taking its origin from the tip of the coracoid process muscle fibers pass downwards to the shaft of the humerus there the medial border for its insertion and the muscle is pierced by musculocutaneous nerve the next muscle is biceps brachii the name itself indicates biceps that means it has got two heads short head and long head of biceps brachii which is taking its origin differently that is the long head of biceps brachii is having a typical feature that it is intracapsular in origin that means it is taking its origin from supraglenoid tubercle which is present above the glenoid cavity and that's why it is intracapsular and the short head as we saw previously it is like taking origin from the tip of the coracoid process along with coracobrachialis the muscle fibers, long and short head, join together, they cross the elbow joint and it is inserted to the radial tuberosity. And before its insertion, it gives an expansion called as bicipital aponeurosis, which passes medially and attached to the subcutaneous posterior border of the ulna. The nerve supply is the nerve of the compartment, musculocutaneous nerve. As the tendon of biceps brachii crosses the cubital fossa, means it is going to the cubital fossa to the radial tuberosity for its insertion. The actions is at the elbow joint, it is the flexor at the elbow joint and it also helps in the supination of the forearm at the radio ulnar joints. So you can see the muzzle here. So long head, it is from glenoid cavity supraglenoid above the glenoid cavity you have the supraglenoid tubercle so the tendon is intracapsular there it passes between the two tubercles in the humerus that is lesser tubercle and greater tubercle then it forms a muscle belly whereas short head takes its origin from the coracoid process the two passes together and it is inserted to the radial tuberosity so then you have an expansion that is bicipital aponeurosis which goes to the posterior border of ulna so you can see in this picture also the biceps brachii, bicipital aponeurosis. The last muscle is brachialis. So it is a deep muscle which is taking its origin from anteromedial and anterolateral surfaces of the shaft of the humerus. Even this forms the tendon and it's forming the floor of the cubital fossa upper part and it's going medially for its insertion to the coronoid process of the ulna. 
and also to the ulnar tuberosity. The nerve supply of brachialis, it has got dual nerve supply that is major part of the medial part of the muscle is supplied by musculocutaneous nerve itself, musculocutaneous nerve itself whereas the lateral part is by the radial nerve and the action of the action of the muscle it is a strong flexor at the elbow joint is a strong flexor at the elbow joint so that is the brachialis muscle what you can see here and it's going to the tuberosity of the ulna and also mainly to the coronoid process of the ulna so particularly you can see here head of the ulna uh, i mean the upper part of the ulna where you are seeing the brachialis muscle to the coronoid process okay and there's a strong flexor at the elbow joint so these are the three muscles that is coracobrachialis biceps brachii and brachialis muscle on the anterior or flexor compartment of the arm now moving on to the artery of the compartment it is called as brachial artery it is the continuation of axillary artery at the lower border of teres major and it is running over the brachialis muscle and at the cubital fossa it will terminate into two terminal branches that is radial artery laterally and ulnar larger ulnar artery medially those are the two terminal branches that is given off in the cubital fossa so you can see the branches there the other branches it's profunda brachii artery which passes deeper and along with the radial nerve it is going to the posterior compartment of the arm then you have medially the superior ulnar collateral artery and inferior ulnar collateral artery and nutrient artery given the twigs to the bone okay and articular branches also so these are the main arteries so you can see there in the picture you have the musculocutaneous nerve which is the nerve of the compartment then median nerve is passing in this compartment but it's not giving any branches as such okay even the ulnar nerve you see is not giving any branches in the arm you will see it along with like cutaneous branches there medial and lateral cutaneous branches the arm and forearm so you can see the brachial artery here okay and you can also see that the median nerve is crossing from lateral to medial side in front of the brachial artery and the ulnar collateral branches deep brachial artery that's the relations we can see anteriorly the median nerve crossing from lateral to medial as i've told previously posteriorly is all the posterior compartment muscles coracobrachialis insertion medially it is the ulnar nerve basilic vein and uh, median nerve the lower part it is medial whereas upper part it will be lateral that's the relations at the elbow structures from lateral to medial if you see or medial to lateral now i'll be telling from lateral to medial that is radial nerve then then the tendon of biceps then the brachial artery and medial most structure is the median nerve i repeat again radial nerve tendon of biceps brachii brachial artery and then the median nerve so coming to the nerve of the compartment as i told musculocutaneous nerve from the lateral cord is the nerve of the compartment except the lateral half of the brachialis all other muscles are supplied by musculocutaneous nerve and to summarize median nerve is also seen in the front of the arm but it doesn't give any muscular branches it is given at the elbow and even ulnar nerve is seen in the front of the arm but it passes behind the medial epicondyle and enters in the medial aspect of the forearm where it is giving the muscular branches thank you